With a fantastic soundtrack, really clean pixel art, and characters full of charming personality, Bloomtown A Different Story is an RPG you're not going to want to miss. Hey guys, Ramen King here. Today we're going to be reviewing Bloomtown A Different Story, a story-focused turn-based RPG with life sim and monster taming elements from developers Lazy Bear Games and Different Sense Games. I also want to give a big thank you to Twin Sales Interactive for providing a review key for this amazing game. Set in the 1960s, Emily and her brother Chester are sent to Bloomtown to enjoy a summer stay with their grandpa, but what starts off as a simple, relaxing vacation quickly turns into making a deal with the devil in order to gain the power to help search for kidnapped kids, fight demons, and save whatever humanity is left in the possessed people that have been driven to do terrible things in Bloomtown. This game's story is truly amazing, and it's one of the biggest reasons I couldn't put the game down. It surprisingly deals with darker and very real themes than one would expect, such as child abuse and murder, but it also has a good balance of humor and side stories to lighten the mood. Emily's major goal is to defeat three big demons of Bloomtown that exist in different people who had committed terrible crimes. It begs the question, was it the demons that caused them to do bad things, or are people just terrible? The characters were also very well written, with each individual having memorable personalities as well as having a strong relationship with each other which helps them mature into more responsible people. The choice making mechanic that happens in certain situations is also really cool. You get to roll a pair of dice that is influenced by your stats, such as Emily's smart stat affecting whether you can sway people by outwitting them, or having the proficiency to lockpick a lock giving you a kind of D&D feel. There are multiple opportunities to boost these stats as well, like reading books to boost your knowledge, and working at the supermarket to build your proficiency stat, which also affects how successful you are at taming demons during battle. Turn-based battles take place across the majority of the game, and are initiated with either interacting with the demons directly, or demons chasing you down and interacting with you. I found this really funny, because you're just this little girl going around this scary world slapping demons for fun. While I haven't played the Persona series, I have seen people often compare Bloomtown to it. I can definitely see the inspiration between the battle soundtrack and using demons to help Emily and her friends cast their spells. There is a bit of strategy involved to cause maximum damage to enemies as certain spells will combo with certain debuffs, as well as the opposing demons having elemental weaknesses. There is a bit of demon taming in this game which is less of a collect them all and more of a sacrificial feature, akin to a mobile game where you'll have to use multiple demons to level one up to gain more spells. When you want to take a break from fighting demons in the underside, you can build relationships with your party members by hanging out with them in the normal world, which also plays a large part in battles. As you spend more time with each character, you gain unique abilities like critical hits restore HP or a 50% chance to clear status effects on start of your party member's turn. You can also participate in different side quests to help the people of Bloomtown with their problems, like helping a homeless guy get a job, or getting rid of demons in someone's basement. Side quests in most games are pretty skippable, but there was a surprising amount of interesting stories that went into a lot of them, so I never really fast forwarded through them. The only times I ever really fast forwarded through anything were the repetitive everyday scenes like working out or working at the supermarket. Next, let's talk about how amazing the music is in this game. Whether you're chilling in Bloomtown where you'll be listening to a more relaxed guitar theme or battling to an awesome jazz rock theme in the underside, you're bound to find yourself tapping your feet to the beat of each track. If you're not a fan of vocals, you also have a nice option to set songs to turn off the vocals so that all you hear is the instrumental. You can also collect records so that you can play certain songs in your room using a record player. A nice little detail that I thought was really cool is that when you play records inside your room and then leave the room, the song doesn't just stop but keeps playing and changes depending on how far away you are in the house. And finally, the art in this game is beautiful and bright when you spend your time in Bloomtown and fittingly scary and gloomy in the underside. I really found myself blown away by the pixel art as well as the UI, which looks like it's based on pages out of Emily's journal. Overall, I normally have a really short attention span, but I really couldn't put this game down. Any chance that I got to play, I played for hours on end. It took me about 21 hours of gameplay to beat the main storyline, including some side questing and a bit of level grinding. This game comes out tomorrow on September 24th, 2024 for Steam and all modern consoles. If you enjoyed this review as much as I enjoyed Bloomtown A Different Story, make sure to give me a big ol' thumbs up and click that subscribe button. 
Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my coffee link in the description below to toss me a tip. This greatly helps me out because while most keys are given to me directly for review by developers or publishers, it's not always a guarantee, so I depend on tips to help supplement funding so that I can buy games to continue reviewing games for you guys. As always, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all in the next video.